Hi folks, how are you doing? Uh, I want to take a little bit of time to talk with you about need statements and some little research tricks that you can do to punch up your need statements. The need statements I've seen so far, some were pretty good, some were excellent, some needed a little bit of um, more solid information. Um, so I just want to show you basically three different places that you can look for data uh, that are credible, that are available, and that will give you a solid need statement. So we're going to get on the internet, and the first place we're going to look is the U.S. Census, which is census.gov or www.census.gov. It's a government website. And you can get a lot of different data. I want to call your attention to a couple of things as well. Um, these are shortcuts, basically. But I'm going to do quick, quick facts, Texas. Okay? And so I typed in quick facts, Texas in the search bar. I hit enter or return. It'll take a while to come up. Actually, it didn't take that long. And so notice what, what we get. We get some overall data on Texas, on population, median income, people in poverty. And I just want you to hold that one in mind, 15.9% there. People, percentage of Texas living in poverty, 81.9% people uh, have a high school uh, uh, graduate, housing value. Note those things as well. So, um, so we have the overall data, but Texas quick facts from the Census, uh, census Bureau Bureau, uh, Bureau uh, as well, but go ahead and click on Quick Facts provides frequently asked census questions by state county as well. So you, you go down there and you click on that and you get view. And then we have the data on Quick Facts overall uh, in Texas. Now, check this out. Remember, we, we pulled some of this data already about age, income level, but just type in Nueces County which is where Corpus is, so click on that. And then we start pulling some of this data and we get uh, information on income, uh, on educational uh, attainment. Uh, we see that, for example, the percentage of people having bachelors is much lower in Nueces County than it is statewide. Um, income and poverty. Um, so we have the mean income. And notice this, people, 19.9% of people in West Coast County live in poverty, uh, whereas statewide it's 15.9%. Either is too high, but it's a lot worse. Um, or People are in a lot greater need, a need in West Coast County than there are uh, in Texas. And this is important, of course, depending on what you're doing. But if you're looking at helping low-income kids, or you're looking at um, literacy or various uh, ideas like this, which some of y'all are. These comparative statistics, looking at the national average, look at the state average, look at what's going on in West Um It's an awful thing to say, but for grant writers, there is the phrase, it's good to be bad. And what I mean by that is not to be um, harsh in any way, but the truth is Texas is less economically affluent overall in terms of the population than the rest of the state. I know we've got a lot of money here, but uh, in terms of the, uh, your, your, your average everyday people, uh, the income levels are lower, the educational level is lower. Then you get into an area like Tex uh, like Nuestas County, which is um, far fewer resources than the rest of the state. So these comparative statistics enable you to make a really, really, really strong case. Now this is just looking at general, general demography and population as well. But you can also look at, uh, look at other things like uh, juvenile delinquency. I know a number of you all are doing youth programs, so you can search that. And again, it'll take a while to come up. you got to spell the words correctly as well. But we have criminal justice, accounting juveniles, law enforcement, prisons, juvenile delinquency cases uh, by sex and race. And again, I'm not going to go through all these, but just be aware that this, stats, this database exists as well. It is public. It is rock solid. 
uh, in terms of its being accepted as um, believable and as accurate as possible for data to be. So according to the U.S. Census, 19.9% of Memphis County residents live in poverty. That's a strong, solid, factual statement that can help you uh, build a need. Um, a statement that, hey, th these dollars really need to come to Nuessis. There's a lot of need, but it's stronger here. You can do that as well. So that's the census. The second side I'm going to have you look at is the um, Center for Disease Control, which is cdc.gov. And um, it's in Atlanta. And it is um, a very broad agency which looks at health in all kinds of aspects. Uh, it looks at disease, it looks at um, why people die, uh, it looks at uh, the impacts of cell phones. Anything that might conceivably impact on an American's health will have some kind of data on it in the Center for Disease Control. And I'm just going to look, for example, a problem that's affecting a lot of people in the West Coast County, diabetes. And we have diabetes trends, we have uh, basics, data, and statistics. So let's just look on these as well. So we have interactive database, we have county data, national and state data, we have county data. Let's just look at nat nat national and state data to see what we find out about diabetes. So this one is cool because you get a handy dandy map. You get overall, you get the medium, uh, uh, age-adjusted adults with diabetes total, and you see it's just under 10% of the population. Let's look in Texas. It's over 10% of the population. And so we say, wow, that's high. So let's see if we can get some county data as well. County data. So county rankings. Let's look at, say, this comes up with an interactive map. So let's just really, really zoom in on... Uh, I guess we got to have to move this around and then zoom in a bit. Move this around and then zoom in a little bit on Texas. I don't know if you can find Nuestas on the map or not, but so Victoria, Cal Calhoun, Refugio, San Pat, and Nuestas. So we get all this data on. On uh, Nuestas County, uh, which sometimes it's, sometimes it's use, useful, sometimes it's not. Um, and um, so, na national map of county data. So, is this helpful? Well, check this out. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. Sometimes there's a lot of change over time. So you're. 2013, and we, and we noticed that some places are having more and more uh, cases of diabetes. And again, um, but again, and you could look at this on almost any health uh, issue. Um, so Center for Disease Control, uh, Census, both of these are, are good, solid places to demonstrate need. A lot of people, I said, you need a little bit more solid local statistics and, uh, you know, and so these can help you, depending on what it, what it is, target what's going on locally. Certainly you can get a lot of that from the census as well. Let me show you one other local thing as well. SSRC.tamucc.edu, which is the Social Science Research Center. Okay. So, and it's right here. We are the vision, the goals, and let's see, it's got some resources. So, citizen survey, coastal bend planning tools, demographics, youth crime, youth data collection project. Hey, some of, a lot of us are doing uh, youth issues. So let's just see what they say as well. Mustis County profile, risk factors, notice it's done, 2010-2013. What are some risk factors, early onset of delinquency, I don't know what that is. So property crimes, arrests for people aged 10 to 14, it's going up. 
drug abuse violations going down. Violent crime was high in 2010, going down. Um, other offenses, um, juvenile referral rates. And again, I'm not going to go through all of these, but if you want some solid data about issue, uh, you know, children and youth, there's a lot of data um, that demonstrates what's going on um, as well. There are graphics, there are charts, and you can use all this data uh, for, you know, teen pregnancy. I wonder what that looks like here. Um, mothers under 18 went up, and then sex abuse is going down, thank heaven. Uh, CAC, you see a pretty high level of uh, children who are being seen for child abuse. So again, just depending on what um, issue you're looking at, it's worth taking some time and poking around um, the Social Science Research Center to see what database is available locally, particularly on youth, but it will cover some other things as well. The other thing is, is staff and contact us. you got these faculty members listed. Philip Rhodes is a good person to talk to. These other faculty members I know are good, but I know that Dr. Rhodes really, really, really got his phone number and his email address. He will take the time out to help you run down data and information if you're trying to find out about the local community. So to sum up, three sources. The Census, the Center for Disease Control, and locally, the Social Science Research Center. Any of these and all of these will help you uh, create a stronger, more credible needs statement. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye now.